Hey, how's it going, Seth? Sorry for keeping you on the line. Man, it's all good, brother. So what's going on, dude? We got WrestleMania next weekend. How you doing? Yeah, it's, uh, I saw on Instagram today, actually, like it was eight days away, and I was like, that's mad, man. I can't believe we're already there. <laughs> it's been wild, dude. I last talked to you eight months ago. Eight months, or four months out from when you became a father. We're now four months out from when you became a father as well, so kind of like the perfect time frame. So I got to ask you, how fathers have been going for you so far, man? Oh, it's great. It's the best. I mean, it's. I, I had no no reference, no frame of reference for it. You know, I had animals, but nothing else. So um, uh, it's the first time, and it's been really an awesome experience. Uh, better, better. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah. What have been like the biggest challenges for you so far? Again, it's only been four months, but there's got to be some lessons you learned so far, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, patience is was the big one you know you, you just don't understand um kind of what it's like to have real patience until you have a little baby that is crying and can't tell you what's wrong you know like mm-hmm. that 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 whole process is brand new and, and completely foreign to anything i've ever experienced and so it takes your your patience as a as a human being to the next level but it's it's a definitely a, a good lesson for me that's for sure how have you been balancing the whole sleep schedule uh, I mean, dude, to be fair, having this, this baby during the pandemic and with the schedule that we've had because of it has made it a lot easier because, mm-hmm. you know, when wrestling is, when I'm not wrestling five days a week or whatever it is, I'm not doing much else. And so I get an opportunity to just be present, be with my, my wife, be with my daughter. Uh, and you know, if we sleep, if we sleep when she sleeps, if she's not sleeping, we're awake. And so um it's it's been okay we've been very fortunate in that regard to not have to uh sacrifice too much in the way of of rest yeah no that's pretty cool and i've always been curious too with both of her parents being superstars is there a point where like you introduce her to wrestling or is it really more and more of those things where like okay this is what we do as a job we're not going to like show her what we do if that makes sense you're like not going to sit her down and have her watch an episode of raw like does that make sense um, yeah, I mean, we're a little too late for that. She's already watched it. <laughs> um, I doubt she'll remember much of it, but she enjoys the motion. So yeah. there's that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that, uh, I think that it'll just be one of those things. that's like a part of her life and she'll grow up, you know, kind of understanding that that's our job and that's what we do. And then, yeah. you know, at one point she'll probably figure out that, um, in some circles we're kind of, uh, a bit of a big deal. And so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, then then that'll be a whole new can of worms. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't think we really have a plan for it, to be honest. Yeah, you just kind of kind of play it by ear, I guess. But you've been back for the last two months, heading into WrestleMania, facing Cesaro next weekend, which is going to be awesome. What's been the inspiration behind this latest character change of yours? Um, my psychopathy, I suppose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, man. I mean, it's just um. You know, look, there's there's a lot going on on SmackDown. It's a loaded show. The roster is loaded. And you come back uh, after a couple months off. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, it's you just got to figure out where you fit in. Mm. And looking at the totality of the, uh, the characters and what the natural progression for my character would be. Um, and what's interesting and hot button uh, when it comes to the media, uh, whether that be the real media or the, the wrestling media, mm-hmm. um, you try to figure out what that character looks like. And for me, this is this is where I'm at in my life, and this is where my character's at in his story. And so mm-hmm. um, the inspiration has, has been from kind of uh, all of that rolled into uh, to one idea. And um, I, I can't explain the suits. I don't know where the suits have come <laughs> from. That. That, that the, the drip, uh, as, as they call it, um, is unexplainable. I assume you're at a point now where you're just trying to outdo yourself in the week before, right? Just keeping it. I mean, if I go every week to try to outdo myself, then it, then it, then I, that's a losing game. You yeah. know, that's a, that's a, that's a no sum ending for me. So <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it fresh, man. Just trying to keep it interesting, uh, bring something different to the table every week. And it, obviously, you know, for the time being, it's something that people seem to be excited about. Uh, and Hey, whatever we can talk about, um, with my name on it, I'm all for it. Exactly. And I mean, obviously no spoilers here, but with WrestleMania being next weekend, do you have something big planned for mania or is it going to be business as usual? as far as the suits go, uh, I got some stuff, you know, the, the thing about mania is obviously you won't be able to, 
I don't know if we'll even get a look at the suits. You know, you'll see me in my gear um, yeah. and match, but, you know, maybe we'll get a backstage shot of me arriving in the suit. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But yeah. I, got, I got some stuff uh, on the back burner that I've been holding on to as we get closer. And then maybe after Mania, I can slow it down a little bit because getting a new suit every week is not easy. <laughs> and going back to your character, we spoke last time about how you definitely have, and, and I know you said at the time, one of the best character arcs in WWE today in the last couple of years because every character change that you've had has, has felt organic, has been necessary for the time. When you came back two months ago, there were some people saying, oh, maybe he'll go back to being the good guy Seth Rollins, the babyface Seth Rollins, whatever. I was one of those people that said it might be too soon for that. Would you agree? And obviously that didn't happen. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Did you think it would be a little too soon to be going back to your roots as a face at this point in time? I mean, look, we can make anything make sense if mm -hmm. we really want to. You know, we can always, in our lives, rationalize any decision we make. But at the end of the day, I didn't feel like um, the path that I was on made a lot of sense for me to be uh, a, a baby face, as, as we say, mm -hmm. um, yet. I thought there was a lot more to be done with the character uh, in the direction I was headed. Uh, I thought it was kind of a little lazy, if uh, if I'm being honest, to have gone the other way with it. Um, mm -hmm. It was a simple explanation. Oh, he's had a baby, it changed his life, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was kind of boring. And, uh, and so <laughs> I was happy that we were able to kind of drift in the direction that we did. And honestly, coming off of my break um i didn't know what the future looked like for the character i didn't know you know where the messiah character picked up or or what it looked like on the back end of it and uh i think over the past few weeks uh mid the best month or so i've really started to find my footing um and it's been a lot of fun um which i think is one of the things our show has been missing is, is kind of the fun factor mm -hmm. um and so I, I feel like i'm doing my best to bring that bring that back yeah, and having a fantastic foil in Cesaro has helped too. It's kind of the perfect clash of characters right now. And one of the biggest parts of your return is bringing back that old theme song that we haven't heard. I mean, I say old, but you used it less than a year ago. Um, you had the Messiah song for a little while before you took time off. What was the reasoning behind that, bringing the old um, you know, Burn It Down theme song back? Gosh, I think the first night uh, I came back, it was just to be a bit of a misdirect. Yes. Um, yeah. And then and a bit of a you know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just think that it, it uh, like I said, it was meant to be a misdirect. And then as we drifted forward with the character, it just didn't seem the Messiah theme didn't seem to fit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so the burn it down one is obviously more memorable. Um, and so I just think that that one we've stuck with that, you know, there's a possibility that we work on something different, but I don't know how different it's going to be. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see where we, where we go. But, um, yeah, I mean, that that theme and uh, that music has always been fairly synonymous with my character in any incarnation, mm -hmm. any incarnation, sorry. So, yeah, it's just uh, it's one of those things that it, it wasn't really a plan either, kind of just winging it, and, and that's where we ended up for now. Yeah. Uh, over the course of your career, you've been a part of various stables from the Authority, the Shield. You had a few followers last year, and you've also flown solo at several points in your career. Do you have a preference? I mean, with this current character, you feel like you need to have followers because it felt like it was not necessary, but it was cool to have that you know that added layer with the uh, Messiah character. With the current character, do you feel like kind of flying solo is the best route to take right now? Yeah, I definitely don't know that I need anybody um, at my side at all times. Um, I think that right now, I mean, it's it's always nice to have people to bring up with you, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I, I think that um, anytime I can do that um, and help elevate people with them by my side, I think it's always good for everyone, including myself and them and the industry as a whole. Um, I, do th I do think that I people some people could learn some things from me and so uh then there's good and bad to um having them as kind of seconds or sidekicks if you will but um yeah i just think this character the way it is right now especially doesn't seem to need uh, anybody but himself and so uh you know who knows where that'll lead uh, we may think differently in, in a couple months but right now going to wrestlemania against sorrow it feels very clean and it feels very simple and um i like that 
And I know when you first started doing the Messiah character about a year and a half ago, you I think you had mentioned at the time that the one glove look was kind of inspired by, or the reasoning behind that was that you had a broken finger at the time, I believe, and you kind of talked about why you were wearing the glove at the time because of that. I forgot to ask you last time we spoke, but you're still wearing the one glove now, so what's been the evolution of the one glove look over the last year and a half, from the injury to now? Yeah, I mean, I literally just wore it because I had a broke finger, and... Um, <laughs> And then it just it's been there, and now I just wear it all the time, even when I'm not wrestling, uh, which is silly. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, man. It just is what it is. I'm like, yeah, well, I'll keep wearing the one glove. I, I, mostly, I just need to find a reason to not wear the one glove. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I, got, I got to have a reason to. I think if I didn't wear the glove, people would be like, why isn't he wearing the glove? And uh, that doesn't need to be a topic of conversation at the moment. So <laughs> I, I, we're just uh, just riding the, riding the wave of the glove, man. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, but you faced Kevin Owens last year WrestleMania. You're facing Cesaro this year. <clears throat> Is it still surreal for you to be? You know, facing these people that you kind of came up in the business with, you know, years before you arrived in WWE. Obviously, you faced everyone from Triple H to Brock Lesnar at Mania. But to be facing people that you kind of came up in wrestling with, that's got to be a cool experience, right, at WrestleMania? Uh, Yeah, it always seems to be more fun, I guess, just because, you know... We can always look back at the, the road that got us here, and when that road's long and full of twists and turns, it's a lot more memorable. Um, and so, um, yeah, it just seems to be really fun and, and less pressure in a weird way, mm-hmm. uh, even though I do feel, obviously, that um, there's pressure every single time. It's WrestleMania, but in some ways, having someone that you're very comfortable with in the ring um, and outside of the ring be your opponent at WrestleMania, it, it just makes things... Uh, just makes things easier, man. And WrestleMania is a high stress level event. So anytime you can kind of take any of that down, it's nice and gives you something to talk about. And, um, yeah, it's just a fun story for anybody who's followed, uh, our careers over the past two decades. Mm-hmm. So if you're a fan or you want to go back and Google and, and check all that out, you can, if not, and you want to just enjoy it for the last few months and you can do that too. So there's just a lot of cool layers and different ways to enjoy, uh, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro at WrestleMania. Yeah, it's going to be a great match. And last week we saw on SmackDown, he swung you backstage like a, a lot. I don't know what the exact number was, but it was quite a bit. What is that experience like taking the Cesaro swing as many times as you did? Ah, oh, it's garbage. <laughs> it's trash. It's disorienting. It's uh, unsettling. It's, it's, uh, look, here's the thing. I fancy myself as a bit of an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm kind of strong sometimes. And, and to be just picked up and thrown about by another human being uh, at will whenever he wants, as many times as he wants, is really unsettling. Um, and I don't like it. And it's also, I mean, you've been on the spinny rides at the carnivals and stuff like that. And they suck. They're the worst kind of rides. Mm-hmm. You know, the teacups. So it's like being on a, a human version of the teacups. Um, it's, it's awful. It's an awful feeling inside your belly and, and your head. So, um, I, I can't, I can't put it any other way. It's not fun. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a great match. Like I said, and I think with this match too, and especially just this WrestleMania as a whole with being at two nights and you've been here for a long time. Um, you know, for the last 10 years, you've been a part of every WrestleMania. Um, this WrestleMania specifically is so light on, I guess, what you would call part-time performers. There's no Undertaker this year, Triple H, John Cena. None of them are on the card. I think the only real part-time performers we have are Edge to an extent, if you even really consider him that, and Shane McMahon. That's got to be, for you, for someone who's been here for the last 10 years and has really been the helm of this ship that is WWE, that's got to be cool, right, to have more focus on the on the full-time members than ever before? Oh, yeah, it's great. I mean, we'd love to see it. Obviously, our roster, and especially the top of our roster, we've been pushing and working for a WrestleMania that's not built around part-time performers for a long, long time. And I think, especially coming out of the situation where we haven't had a live crowd in over a year, and the first live event back is is basically on our shoulders, um, that says a lot about, you know, kind of where we're at um, as a whole. And uh, I'm real proud of that. Um, I think that I can speak for a lot of other guys and girls who are a part of that as well. It have been for you know an extended period of time that we're we're all we all take pride in that because you know we never want to look at it as we're we're not good enough, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that that's that's always how it's been portrayed in a sense. That's when the part timers come back. It always seems to you know turn to the narrative that oh, well, these guys. Uh, the full-time guys, they're they are stars to a certain extent, but they're not the stars, you know? And so um, now I think 
this is a great indication of the, that that narrative is, is bullshit. And so mm-hmm. we are the stars and we are the ones that have carried this industry for the last decade. Um, we are the, the kind of the trendsetters and we're going to carry it into the next generation. Um, and so to be able to have this WrestleMania as that jumping off point is, uh, is really something we're proud of. Like, I mean, I know I am anyway. Yeah. And the further you go along, is there a certain point in the last five, 10 years that you see yourself becoming a locker room leader? Like, is there a certain point after the scenes are gone and more people become part-time that you yourself see yourself become a locker room leader behind the scenes? Um, yeah, you know, it never really, um, it, you know, it wasn't like a moment or anything like that. It just sort of happened over time, mm-hmm. I suppose. And, and just, I guess maybe, uh, you know, kind of started a few, it, it's funny. I, I, after every European tour or every, uh, overseas tour, you know, the crew all gets together and, um, shares a shot whether it be of whiskey or even if it's just water, if you're not a drinker or whatever, we all kind of get together and do a toast. And usually the guy on top leading the tour um, is the one that kind of, you know, brains in the toast, if you will. And I guess it was one year some time ago, I looked around the locker room and I was like, oh, I, I guess, I guess that's me now. I guess <laughs> I do that. Now. Yeah. You know, I just, I'm like, well, who's going to do it? John's not here. I'm like, Roman's out. I'm like, uh, he's on the other tour. Yeah. I mean, I guess who's the guy? Well, I guess I'm one of the guys. So, well, I'll do it, you know? And so just stuff like that over the years that you go, oh, well, I guess, I guess I'm in that position. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. No, no, it's funny. And it's been cool to see in the last couple of years with that transition, with you becoming a locker room leader and whatnot. Uh, Roman Reigns as well. Obviously, you guys came up together as part of the Shield. That's a match you guys have faced off a number of times over the years. But that's got to be a match that you're looking forward to having again at some point, right? Especially with the different dynamic. You're doing something different. He's doing something drastically different. That has got to lead the list. Maybe not number one, but that's got to be a match that you want to have again at some point, right? I mean, always. I think that, uh, you know, you look at the each time our paths have crossed over the years, we've both been in, in um, different places every time with our characters and with our careers and where we're at and where we're going. And uh, every time it's been different and interesting and, and shockingly, um, considering where we came up together, shockingly, it's one of the matches that um, WWE hasn't, you know, beat over your head over the years. Like it hasn't <laughs> been done to death. Mm-hmm. Uh, our connection is kind of, yeah, it's just it's forever, you know. It's always going to be there because of the shield. Um, and I think that you look at the WrestleMania moment, uh, you look at, you know, kind of my comeback from my injury, uh, some of the other stuff. We've always paralleled, and, and when our paths have crossed, it's been exciting. And so, uh, obviously, he's right now uh, doing the, I, what I believe is the best work of his career. Um, and I think that whenever we do cross again, it's going to be, wholly different than the times before and uh, I dare say could be our best encounter yet so we'll see what happens whenever it does absolutely uh, final two questions for you Seth one I was watching back your match with Orton the other day on the uh, six year anniversary I think you've mentioned this before but was that spot planned I mean obviously it was planned but like did you guys practice the RKO out of nowhere because that was absolute pure perfection oh, I don't know if I've uh, maybe I never told you the story but I mean we Obviously, when we do WrestleMania, we have rehearsal for these matches because it's not like a regular show where you have the time to just sit around with your opponent and figure the thing out or whatever. Um, So we have the rehearsal like the day before. And um, I had come up with the idea maybe a week or two prior and um, had run it by Joey Mercury, who was uh, working with us at the time and was helping produce and uh, is just kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to... uh, what he's capable of in the wrestling business. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, I think we can do it. So we got to rehearsal and, um, you know, it's just not the same energy. Right. So Randy didn't want to take the bump and I was trying to get up in the air, but it was like kind of awkward. And, um, I was doing it pretty well with Joey, but Joey's also a full foot shorter than Randy. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, it it was a lot easier to step on Joey's head than it was, you know, giant Randy. And, um, and so it was one of those things that we tried and tried and tried and we got close a couple of times, but we never actually really uh, connected with it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Randy was like, you know, we had a couple of backup plans in mind. Um, but Randy was like, you know, F it, we'll try it. Mm-hmm. Like I always, I always, usually I always want to bat a thousand. 
I never take any chances in these shows, but screw it. Let's take a chance. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad we did. And I think he's glad we did as well. So it's yeah. one of those, uh, one of those moments that'll live on for forever and always be replayed and talked about and, and stuff like that. But no, to answer your question, we never actually practiced it proper. Uh, it never happened. So Damn. that was the first time and the only time it's ever been done. All time, yeah, it was an awesome moment, an all-time Mania moment. It was just fantastic, and hopefully we get the same thing next weekend. You and Cesaro WrestleMania 37. It's going to be awesome. Uh, that, uh, Seth, thanks so much for the time, man. I appreciate it. Ah, thank you.